Welcome to my channel. Thank you guys for tuning in. And today, join me for a dummies guide to watch modding. Now, um, from the get go, I am no way a professional watch modder. Um, I'm an amateur um, modder. I, the way I started off, um, I just started off by doing um, sort of refurbishments or restorations, minor restorations. So changing crystals and um, just stuff like that, basically, um, because I do um, buy and sell um, used Seikos. That being said, um, the reason I wanted to make this video is um, I am, to put it in a simple way, I am a cowboy. Um, and that's genetic um, because my father's a builder and, you know, he showed me some cowboyish ways. So, you no, know, I'm good at DIY, but I transfer that across um to whatever else i do so i have made um quite a lot of mistakes while i've been modding so this video i've sort of put together um what to do what not to do um the errors that i've made you know some of the horror stories i've had and how to fix mistakes um that you might have done now there are two clear-cut classes when it comes to modders obviously you've got the amateur guys uh, and then you've got the professionals. So professionals, they're mod for other people. So when it comes to professionals, this video is not aimed at them. Obviously, they know what they're doing. Um, and they're the guys that I sort of look to. But when it comes to tools, as you can see here, I've got a bag of tools that I'll go through here with yourselves. Um, you want to get the best um, professional tools. Um, they're expensive. You know, small, simple tools can go up to a thousand pound on some of them. But I think in the long run, if you're going to make a business salary and you're handling other people's watches, you have to do it. Uh, this is what I'm just going to focus on. Um, the, the amateurs, myself, you know, hobbyists that, you know, you just want to have a little tinker with your, with your watches, um, whatever. Now, I only do Seiko's. I only deal with Seiko's. So that's all I am going to cover. So let's get started. Okay, a um, few things. If you buy a second-hand watch um, and you know you check the accuracy and it's running a bit slow, I find that issue with a lot of 7S36 movements or 26 movements, sorry, when I bought uh, SKX 007s. Um, first thing you want to do, and it has worked, um, a mate of mine, um, he's got an SKX 007 and his was running like three, four, five minutes fast a day. So... First thing you you should have if you know if you're a collector, especially if you're a guy that just has one watch or two watches, then to be honest, this video probably won't apply to you. Um, but you know if you do have a collection of watches uh, and you trading watches, then a demagnetizer is cheap. It's from eBay, um, does the job. Um, I put it onto his watch um, and I've increased, uh, made it more accurate. It was running 30 seconds, 20 seconds fast a day, um, which is within specification. So first things here is a demagnetizer. Really easy to use. Put your watch on there, hold down the button for like three to five seconds and just raise it off slowly. Uh, do it two, three times. Um, and that's the general consensus on how to use one of these. So there we go. To address um, your basic sort of tools, uh, and this is, this isn't even modding. This is for your normal guys that have a couple of watches. This is a bracelet link remover, proper cheap and nasty, but it does do the job. This hasn't let me down. Uh, and a spring bar tool. Now, I mean, when you, if you buy bracelets and stuff from eBay or China, they throw a load of these in for you. I've got about 20, 30 of them. So these are always handy. Obviously, you know, you don't want to go in the UK. Normally it's Timpsons that does it. Um, you know, I was paying £7 a pop just to change a bracelet link. So that's the first thing I sort of bought. Now, um, to go into, let's start, let's start from the case back. So if you're taking off case backs, um, if you search on eBay for a case back remover, I actually haven't got my old ones. I bought the, you know, the silver case back remover with the knurled handle is a big old thing. It's about that big um, and it's got a three pin sort of design. Now that fits into um, the back here, into these notches on the case backs. For me, um, 
that was not an easy tool to use. I know a lot of people use them. Um, I've seen on a few videos that like really good modders still use them. For me, I find ergonomically it's not the best. Um, I've had a lot of slips out of that. I've had uh, I've scratched up case backs. Um, it just doesn't sit right for me. What I did find, this cheap tool, uh, it does the job really well. I've not had any slips off it. Small, you can adjust it. The adjustment is quite large on this and then it'll fit all your case backs and it'll, it'll come off uh, with relative ease. Now, again, professionals, you know, you have the professional tools um, where you have a whole jig set up and, you know, uh, there's a little machine that comes down and, and you do it manually. But for me, again, just addressing the amateur hobbyists, get yourself one of these. Don't bother with that big silver thing. Okay, secondly, you open your case back and then you have a movement on the back, or sorry, inside the case. So obviously, like I'm not gonna go through how to mod the watch, but I'll just, just tips and tricks. Um, you use, where's it gone? One of these just to press in the into the indentation to remove the crown. Now I've had no issues on that on any watch. Uh, that's pretty easy. Getting the movement out, I did kind of struggle, but I found a nice easy way. Let me open the case back, I'll show you where. Just loosen this a bit. So I'll try and go through stage by stage of the mistakes I made and how I fixed them. So on this, here's your movement. Um, that little lever I was talking about is just there, let me zoom in. There, with that little indentation. Press that lightly, the whole crown comes out. Now, um, before you start, you need to have a place to work. Um, I work off my kitchen table at the moment. It's messy, it's not dust free. So when you're opening a full watch out and you change your crystals and dials and hands, you know what, you need to try to get a dust free environment uh, to the best you can so you need like a work mat to work on if not i use coasters um i find it quite easy to use and what i find handy is if you take the crown out right where the crown sits you can use this end to just lift the movement out the movement once it's loose flip the watch onto a coaster or something soft and the movement should come out nice and easy now the emphasis here is the right tool for the right job. So like I said, unless you're professional, then you need the really high end uh, tools. But um, as an amateur, you know, I've done a bit of trial and error, then um, you don't need the really expensive tools. What I do recommend is, this is again, it's a cheap little, this is the thing, yeah. This is what don't really work for me. Um, and I don't like to use this. But other than that, you can just get a, pack like this um, for about I think £10 and I've got some extras in there so what that does sort of cover you with it gives you some screwdrivers gives you the case back remover obviously gives you a, a spring bar pry tool tweezers gives you some case back removal tools or some pry tools and a movement holder um, you get what you pay for they're not the best they could be better but they do um, the job now, once you take off your case back, that's when I started running into problems. So time for the horror stories or the problems I had. Um, this is the first watch that I properly modded. Um, all I wanted to do was change the orange seconds hand. Um, the problems I came across were is um, I never had the correct dial setting tools. Uh, sorry, the hand setting tools. So uh, I pulled these hands uh, off with um, these here, the spring bar tool. And as you can see, if I on a close up, I did damage the hands there. Now, uh, the easy fix for that, we just need a 
scouring pad or a scotch bite pad something tougher than the back of a sponge uh, you can get these from like the pan shops um, and I did scuff the same do the same damage to the hands on this turtle um, and you can see where it's got some brushing on it you can actually brush them out give it a brush look and that's a quick easy fix just be careful of the loom and of course you have to look how your hands are um, you know the loom is slightly you can get away with it because I polished the back end so I didn't actually touch the loom um, so you can use those scourers they're also good for um, brushing your watch case bracelets um, clasps um, they don't get rid of deep scratches um, and you can tell the brushing is slightly coarser than your OEM brushing but if it's on clasps um, and bracelets, uh, you can get away with it. It will make it look uh, a bit better. <clears throat> so this is the issue I had on this. And obviously I didn't have the correct um, hand setting tools. So with me, when I want to do something, I mean, I'll, I'll have no patience. I didn't wait for the right tools, etc. So what I used was um, I used a security um, screwdriver bit which is not the best thing obviously it's metal it's going to scratch up your handset or you can use like a biro pen to take the nib out and if it's small enough it will uh, press them on but this takes me to the next tool get some of these these are cheap and these are hand setting tools you can see um, they've got different diameter holes come on we'll zoom in so you'll get get one which is about two three different sizes in there um, they're nylon tipped so they're safe for the hands and uh, like I said you can set the hour hand the minute hand and the second hand um, in the watch fairly nicely um, if you want to go a step up um, you can get like a jig where it's got a plunger on there so you just put the watch in put the hand on and press it on now some tips putting the hands on um, that is quite tricky so <clears throat> I really struggle with tweezers um, and what I find sorry let me rewind removing the hands you want some tools like this I broke this one uh, don't ask but yeah with these ones um, just put like a bit of plastic um, over the dial if you see some uh, modding videos they'll show you this and literally just pop them off so you need some pry tools like this again they're cheap they're one pound, two pound from eBay. Um, yeah, so that's that. And then when you're putting the hands on, use these. Now, what I find is a great, um, was a lifesaver, was this blue tack um, or just some sticky tack, whatever. You can use other things as well. But I find you take a bit off, you can just slowly put the hand in there, um, the tip of the hand. Um, I know the SKX hands have got the pointy tip, but if they don't, you can just stick the hand. Obviously, it helps you stabilize it over the um, pinion and press on. One tip on the hands. Um, when you set them, have a look how they're sitting. So your hands, if you're not careful, they can sit and uh, tilt or sit quite back. So that will, when you put them all together, the second hand or the other hand they might interfere with each other so what i advise is when you once you've set it have a look at it eye level to make sure uh, the back end you know the, the blade part is actually level um and it's not tilted to one side or the other so do that for each hand it'll save you a lot of time i mean i've had to go back multiple times um, on this watch you know so the second thing i did on this so we're on the hands dial. Okay, so I had a massive problem when I was modding this. What I've done to this is I've done a coin edge replacement and I've put in a flat sapphire glass. So it's, it's known about these turtles that the bezels are super tight and I was this close from ordering a um, bezel removal tool, which is like a jig with four blades uh, in the corners and you've got a light sort of knob on the side and you turn it turn it turn it and it'll pop your bezel off i recommend getting that tool uh, it's only 20 25 pound 
uh, it's worth it. I've never had no problems with bezels um, until I come across this turtle. Normally what's good enough is, is this and just something like this. The key thing with the bezels, because uh, it's on the case, is protection. Make sure you use protection. You want to use a bit of electrical tape. Just tape around the area where you're using it. Do not think it's okay um, because I wrecked this case trying to get it off. If you take the bezel off, underneath is actually full of scratches. You can see some light marks here. I did uh, brush them with the scouring pad, but still, um, I did damage this quite bad trying to get it off. Obviously, it, you know, um, you get frustrated, but you need the right tools for the job. So, long story short, how I got this off, I opened the whole watch out because I wanted to replace the crystal anyway. Uh, and I think it was just through sheer determination. I put some tape on here, um, slipped this in, and it just popped off. So, that was um, a victory moment there. As you can see, I've damaged the crown a bit. So, you know, it's not worth it. Please just use um, some tape some electrical tape something that will um cushion the blow will stop your case getting marked okay the other big mistake i did while i was trying to take this off i mean i spent initially i spent a good hour trying to get it off so i was like jamming this in here and what i did i thought it'd be clever but it was quite stupid when i think about it i jammed it in and i used a, a small hammer yeah that's right i used a small hammer to try and get it in between the gap now some of the Seikos if you have a look on the bezels it's not present on this one um, they have a very slight notch let me get a watch that I can show you that on now I've got a um, just a stock earlier now it's not really it's hard to show on camera but can you see just here this is a slight ever so slight gap um, compared to the rest now that's usually on the turtles I find it's usually around the 12 o'clock mark um, so I'll have a look at for those and start from there okay yeah so as I was saying with this STO turtle I was smashing it with a hammer and I noticed the dial just started moving so of course um, I thought what well, have I done I bricked it so I opened it out, took the movement out, and I saw that I'd broken the dial feet. Um, jumped on Facebook, um, the modest group, just asked a question, what shall I do? Um, people recommended using dial, um, dial dots and stuff, so I didn't have any to hand. The best thing you can use is some double-sided tape. Um, that worked a charm. I cut them into really, really small squares. Yeah, it's double side tape like this. So I cut them into really small squares and I applied um, the tape to the actual movement holder in about four or five different spots. Um, obviously don't get it on the date wheel, etc. Um, then you align the dial, because your feet are broken, um, you align the dial to the date and this is the one that actually broke off. So I've set this in, double sided tape is quite strong um, it's actually never let me down so that worked a treat this is solid now the dial does not move uh, so that was a great relief once I got that fixed I've also seen on eBay um, some you can get spare dial feet and uh, we're at the bottom um, there's like a there's like a dot where the leg sticks to so you can up I'm sure you can uh, attach that back to the dial using some um this some high pot cement but again the the sticky tape works great there's no issues with that when it comes to taking the movement out and when you are doing dial changes this is another tool you have to have um you can get them in brass plastic whatever uh, and say movement holder um really good makes it really easy now my earlier mods on this i don't know all without um, a movement holder and I had a lot of trouble when I had to take <clears throat> when you know when you remove the crown and you've got to change the movement around to put the crown back in I lost hands because of that I bent the hands because of that so you really want to use one of these 
obviously on your hands, wear gloves or wear those finger cuts. Um, they're really important. Obviously, the cleanliness part of it is actually, you know, the the end part because what you'll find is you keep opening your watch because you'll see a speck of dust here, a speck of dust there. So for that, you'll see a lot of people use these. These are great, but then you get the stubborn marks. So obviously, it's always good having a small microfiber cloth around and just give it a good wipe. Also, back to the blue tack works a great treat of taking smudge marks, uh, smudge marks off um, dial hands um, on the back of the movement. Obviously, if you've got a exhibition case back, which is on, I've got one on this SKX, and you don't want to see finger marks on that. So, what the blue tack is great for is actually getting the grimy uh, marks of that. Just rub it over there, obviously on the dial. Um, the thing is with, you can get away with, I haven't seen much smudging on this dial because I did handle it without gloves, but on a matte dial, you will see it. Um, but on these sort of textured or the shiny dials, you won't see it as much, but you will see dirt and debris. Um, it will shine through, no matter how small. So it's always worth giving it a good clean before you put the movement in under the crystal um, yeah so those are the problems that I had when it comes to the hands the dial the other thing I've modded chapter ring now on a few of the Seikos the chapter ring oh, the only way it comes out is you have to pop the crystal out because the bezel goes in first the insert sorry the chapter ring sorry and then the crystal goes on top so for that obviously you need a crystal press now there are a few um, available on the market. Now, the one you've probably seen is the cheapest option is one of these things here with a handle, squeaky handle. Uh, it's very cheap and you know what it is? Um, it works. So what I find, the problems I find with it is when you're putting, popping crystals out is great. You know, I've not had any issue with that. But I've had people um, say that they've, broken the lever or this is bent off now maybe you just got a rubbish one but uh, you need a lot of force to sort of pop that off so that's too much force probably for the watch but for crystal popping them out is great um obviously put down a cloth in between it should be all right now putting it back on this is where i think you should spend some money you can get um crystal presses where Again, it's more of a jig setup and there's a wheel on the top, so it's um, controlled and, and it gives you a a level surface. With this, what I find when I put a crystal on, after I rotate the watch, um, because it applies pressure, it doesn't apply it evenly. Now, that's because I think this not slightly out of line, so this sits at a slight tilt. But it does work and it has worked for me. I've put this flat sapphire in there and uh, there's no problem with it so the device i'm talking about looks it's a similar idea to this but obviously it's a bit more expensive it looks a lot better and um, this to be honest i bought this um it's a bit rubbish to be honest um I don't, it just doesn't work for me i don't know why you know i pressed the crystal in but it still isn't good enough it's still bent so i have to go back to the my other press but you know again they're not expensive but you buy cheap you buy twice so there you go Thin screwdrivers come in handy. Um, they're good for when you are taking the dial off. When you do remove a dial from the movement, um, I've had no issues with that. Just slip it in slowly and pry it off all the way around the end. So yeah, with the crystal press, um, crystals aren't that fragile, so you do have to put a bit of force down. Um, and it's okay, actually. I, you know, I do put quite a bit of force on there just to set it in. Make sure it's level. If you need to realign, pop it back out. Don't hesitate because um, you want that crystal to sit um, as flat as possible. Uh, so yeah, I've had no issues with that. Um, I regularly change crystals um, on watches that need refurbing. In fact, I've ordered one for this. Uh, there's a couple of scratches on here. And I've ordered a single dome uh, hardlex crystal for this. So I'll be doing that. And the reason I haven't made videos of me modding, um, when I modded this, when I changed the chapter ring, um, I did actually record that, but I didn't put the video up because it was like an hour long and I, had, I was fighting with it and I had all sorts of mishaps. 
So I thought best not put that on video. Uh, it would have been great for bloopers, no doubt. But yeah, so crystal press, okay. You got your crystal in, um, bezel popping. Like I said, use these to get your bezels off. Um, one important thing you also should have is a bit of silicone grease. So this is great for gaskets, um, which is under the bezel and on the case back. Um, I've had no problems with the case back gaskets, to be honest. Um, I've never had to change one, but I have had to change quite a few SKX um, bezel gaskets. Now with them, uh, if you got an SKX and it's quite tight, um, the best, first thing you want to do is obviously pop it off. Now I find SKX bezels are quite easy to pop off. There's no issues with that. Pop it off and you might find quite a lot of groin. So this is a great little tool. It's the end of a electronic toothbrush. Um, you can see it's quite dirty because I've used it. I mean, it works great around on the case of watches, case backs. It gets into, you know, all the little corners, whatever, just to give it a good scrub. Um, give it a good clean. So if you clean the inside of the bezel uh, and then what you'll find about seven times out of ten if the bezel gasket gasket is intact um, use a bit of silicon grease on the inside and slap it back on and most of my experience they run uh, the great after that um, I did the same thing to this and it, it leaves them you know quite smooth it makes it a lot easier uh, what can happen is the actual bezel can be slightly out of shape the the bezel uh, gasket sorry um you can tell if it's a bit deformed or if it's a bit stretched out then the best thing is just replace it there's a few sellers on ebay um they can be quite expensive like 10 12 pound a pop that's too much um i think for a you know just a, a gasket so try to get um wholesale sailors or people who give you because i bought six for like 15 pounds so that works out um yeah, they're easy to apply. Again, grease them up uh, and put them in. The other thing that I've done is, again, on the SKX, uh, I changed to an s -crown. Um I thought that'd be more difficult than it was. So you, all you do, you, you get your um, the new stem that you get, um, match it up to your older stem, use some snips, some tough, thick snips, um, measure it up with a caliper, or digital caliper and just cut them there now you know as i'm going on more and more tools are being introduced as you can see this is not all of them i've got a box full of stuff i'll just give you a quick look here under my table you know the more things you do the more tools you need so again just weigh it up of what you actually intend to do so with me right now um i can do pretty much everything i mean i don't miss with movements at all um, but when it comes to changing and modding i believe i've got everything that you know i need um to do the job so when it comes to the stem you will need one of these um so a lot of the times if you actually just google like jewelry um tools or tools for jewelers uh, watches and jewelers obviously uh, jewelry have the similar tools so this is like a little vice um, it grips the stem uh, helps you measure it helps you cut it um, and then once you've cut it, it brings me on to another nice little piece of kit or something that you want is you want some diamond coated files now these are again for hobbies crafts um, and diamond they're coated with some diamond dust i don't know if it's real diamond dust but you know, um, and that makes it great for really fine um, filing. So you file the end of the actual stem so it's smooth enough to screw the crown on. And for that, you can use a bit of hypo cement or some Loctite to make sure that crown will not screw back off. So that was no problem. That was good. Uh, it's just the, re you know, the simple stuff that I don't think about. Mainly for me, the problems we have had, again, is with dial and hands. So... You get the right tools for that um, then it should be pretty easy like i said again it's not even tools which help you it's things like the blue tack uh, double-sided tape you know these little things around your house that will um, sort of help you on that so i think yeah that's my those are two watches that i've modded um my turtle and the skx now 
I think I've learned a few lessons here, so I shouldn't be making those mistakes again. Let me see if I've missed anything out. Um, yeah, it's good to have like a little multi-tool. I mean, these you can pick up from like B&M bargains or Panlands or little tool stations, B&Q, whatever. These are handy just to have around. Obviously, hand side stuff. You don't want the massive pliers. Um, yeah, that's all good. So just to summarize, you know, top tips. Um, a clean environment is a must. I've gone back on this watch, the other watch, multiple times because I've seen a speck of dust in it that shouldn't have been there. Uh, and I'm cleaning, I'm cleaning, I'm cleaning. Alcohol wipes are good to get uh, rid of, you know, grimy marks. Um, second thing, obviously, blue tack. The blue tack helps quite a lot in the cleanup operation on, on the whole surface of the watch. And it's good for setting or stabilizing your hands, um, the hands. So you can set them. Obviously, third thing you need, the right tool for the job. You know, spend some money, get hand setters and all that. I mean, because I know there's a lot of people out there where they'll just give it to a watchmaker. Um, for me personally, if you're not confident, sure. But if you are alright, if you're okay with DIY, assembling things, then give it a go. To be honest, there's not a lot that can go wrong. And that's the beauty of Seiko's because they're not expensive. You know, it might be expensive buying the watch, but... Your movement you can pick up for 30 40 pound so the worst thing you can do to a watch is wreck the movement on it spend 40 quid you got a movement you spend 400 pound on a watch what's well, 40 quid right um bezels you know bezels at 30 quid inserts they're not expensive so the actual bits and bobs are not pricey sapphire crystals you know they can go to about 35 quid but again there's not a lot of damage you can do the dial is something which that's tricky though, so you want to protect the dial because your genuine dials are 80, 100, 150, depending on what watch you got. Um, that's the only thing. Hands, again, you can pick them up. You can pick up hands for like 20 quid. So, you know, the way it up, you're not messing with Rolexes at the end of the day. You're messing with, you know, Seiko. So I think get out there, um, you know, uh, have a play with them. Um, one tip, don't rush, don't get under pressure. Um, for me, I get frustrated. So I'll spend hours trying to do something really simple um, and with the tail, I'll cause more damage in the end. So just take it calm, think about it, look in your toolbox, see if there's a different way around something, um, you know, work smart. Um, look at look at videos, that's the other thing. I've got a bad habit of skipping through videos, tutorials. Um, I might miss a small you know, little uh, knack here and there. But I work like that. I make mistakes and I learn off them. Um, and in the long run, in the long run, you know, um, I get quite good at it. So watch videos, recommendations. Uh, Loom Shot. Uh, he, he's a wicked guy to watch. He does really nice mods. Um, shout out to Loom Shot, and he's on a professional level because you'll see he's got the actual tools I'm talking about. The really top end um, vices and jigs and to do all this stuff, but because he mods uh, professionally so he needs that um live watch another um obviously there's there's lots out there so if i don't mention the name doesn't mean they're not good it's you know just just think see how they're working live watch i find he's superbly meticulous he's blue tacking he's cleaning at every stage um very good um then you've got watch repair channel for me i think that guy he's on an expert level um, he messes with all types of watches and he can break a watch down and go into all the little bits and pieces. Um, I don't think I'll ever do that. Uh, that's just way, you know, beyond me. But, you know, when it comes to your mods and stuff, you know, I can, this is all you need and you can start modding. I think my plan is to probably get a part here and there, mod a different watch. Um, personally, when it comes to mods, I don't like um, I can appreciate a modded watch, you know, a full-on modded watch. I can appreciate it from a distance, but I don't like to go all out when it comes to mods. I don't like to transform the look of the watch. Um, and that's just, that's just me. That's my opinion. Um, I like what I like to call stock mods, you know. So, again, it still looks stock. It's recognizable. It hasn't gone full submarine now, the double dome and, you know, all that. Um, same thing with this. The only thing 
I want to do to this is put some sea urchin or sumo hands on this uh, and that's it again you know what it is I'm not changing the look too much um, you know I'm keeping it pretty standard but that's my taste and you know everyone's got different tastes um, hopefully I haven't missed anything you know learn from my mistakes but the good thing is when I did make a mistake hopefully I've told you guys a way to fix them um, that's all Thank you for watching. As always, subscribe, hit the like button, and let me know what your thoughts in the comments. And thank you for watching.